show them or if you want to use a, a different mesh for your ladder how you can actually do it and kind of get around the system a little bit but it gives you these points these are ones that came with it and I decided I was going to add a tall tower here and add my own and it's scalable so you can scale how many ladder sections you actually have and that kind of stuff and these will automatically whenever you get to the top as long as you place the ladder all the way up to the top it will show you it will automatically go up to there this one right here kind of the same thing if they're placed in the right direction these are all ones that I placed down and yes they're very symmetrical but I added one that wasn't symmetrical and you can actually go left and right up down left and right so um, and how to actually make it work for when you get to the top um, there is a top um, selection you have to put on there plus you can actually set it up to where you can go around corners it's really simple really easy to work with mm, love the asset pack right now it is still free on the marketplace um, you can see you can see which directions you can travel with these so if you don't know how to um, essentially once you place them in position you update your near holds and it will update the directions you can travel for these pegs here and if they're too far apart they just won't work so we'll, we'll see that here in just a minute whenever I actually start messing around with this so the first step is I added uh, polygon pirates in here and I'm gonna retarget the character to use a Cindy Studios character and we're gonna take a look at the demonstration map that comes with the polygon pirates and may actually make my own custom scene you know just to showcase how we can actually integrate it in there but let's just see what's here in the demonstration map if there's any ladders already or things of that nature that we can just put it in and go um, so it's gonna take a minute to, to load this up and you guys have seen me retarget the Cindy Studios characters to work with the Mixamo animations with um, UE4 third person animation blueprint and the animation starter pack as well so there's gonna be some changes in how it's kinda of done here because of the fact that there's animation montages blend spaces and all kinds of stuff so I may not you know I'll do my very best to get it as close to possible you know, to being right so let's let this compile shaders well it's compiling shaders we won't be able to see it as pretty but if you notice we have rope on our um, ship here might be able to come up with some way of climbing the rope and being able to get up here perhaps so that's one option and we'll see as as we go um, maybe set it up to where you can climb the mast on them or whatever uh, let's see what else we have that Mike can use this towards um, being that there's single pieces we can add on there maybe if you wanted to jump and grab a hold of the rail and then jump onto here and then get up onto a balcony so we can do some like uh, what the hell is that game um, Assassin's Creed where you can like climb walls and you know might, might do some handholds here to make it to where we can actually climb uh, the mountains get up on top of the rocks that kind of stuff so if you're, you're doing a, another action game where you want to shoot and you want to get to a sniper perch and you had to climb up the rocks and stuff like that yeah maybe you could do that um, let's actually fly over here to the other islands see if there's anything else ladder wise we might be able to use and make functional love this asset pack one thing they did not put in here in the demonstration map that I just freaking love and if you guys want me to I'll, I'll show how to get it working there we go I'm pretty sure I thought there was a, um, a ladder going up to a tower somewhere in this I don't know if we're gonna be tall enough to fit up there or not but we'll see but I, I I'm I was sure that there was a ladder of some sort going up to something so we'll see if there's an actual ladder as well so we can actually put that on something else no island over here, but there was um, uh, fish and sharks. And if you guys don't know, Cindy Studios doesn't really do animals in their their theme because um, there's another developer out there that kind of have a, a, as far as I know, a good working relationship with, 
who is doing animals. So we're like, okay, we won't overstep you. You do your animals, and we'll do our people and our, our um, map stuff. So, yeah, um, that's where you don't see a lot of animals in Sydney Studios' assets. But I'm sure we can come up with something here. Um, I'm actually going to... Yeah, the fish and the shark. Uh, really stupid simple to just give them random animations, or if you want to create an anim create a, an AI system for the shark to where it attacks and that kind of stuff. Uh, it comes with a single animation for the fish and for the shark, and not just a shark that's got spears stuck inside and hanging up from something. You can actually place them in, and you can create an, your own animation blueprint system form I love that skull rock there. Um, so you can actually make a, a basic animation system or AI system for them to where they swim around the water. You could have them set up to where they're um, on sea pond where if you jump in the water and, and you set up this as a water volume where you actually swim in it and actually have swim animations for it. Um, you could actually set it up to where the sharks can come after you and attack you or whatever else. But it gives you the basics there for the uh, the sharks. So if you go to meshes and characters, creatures, you have fish and a basic swimming animation where they're kind of like moving their tail. Um, as you can see, just a basic fish animation. That's all you need. You just create a little AI random movement thing and that works out pretty good. Same thing for the shark. And nothing adds more life to like these maps here than you walk over here to now right now the water you can actually walk in it and it's it's not set up as a water volume there's no game mode attached to this one at all right now so you see I just hit play and I'm flying around um, if I go to my world settings change it over um, I'm gonna use his hit play and now we have our character so this is the character we're going to retarget to um, the uh, Sandy Studios character. But if you try walking into water now, you're just going to fall through. There's no swim animations attached anywhere. So you'd have to have um, swim animations. And then you could probably use some of the animations from here to allow you to jump up and climb up onto the, um, the dock pieces. So you can get out. And there's no player start on these maps either. So, cool. At least we have some movement. Let's go ahead and see what, what it's going to take uh, to get him animated. So I'm going to actually save all, save selected, and I'm going to go ahead and create a... Um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and make my own maps folder. Because at some point, I'll probably copy this project over, rename it, and add my multiplayer template in here. But for now, we need a maps folder so we have a place to put our temporary map so we'll create a new level VR basic and like I always do I'm gonna get rid of all the little stuff in hell you go away you go away you Now, my simple multiplayer template actually has a uh, player character and stuff in it, but we won't need to use it. So, there. We have uh, a test map we can walk, walk around in, and there'll be much rejoicing. So, let's go ahead and save all, save selected, go to my maps, my maps folder, and we'll call this test map. And then we're going to do save all again, so it'll save the build data. So, now the fun part. Go to our meshes, character, people, and you've got physics assets for all these characters separate. But you still only have the one skeleton. So what I'm going to do, since I'll probably end up doing more than one City Studios asset pack in this project to kind of goof around, is I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder called Character. We're going to need this for the animations as well. And new folder, Blueprints. 
we're gonna need animations and mesh so the first one we're gonna do is the mesh we'll go back to my people scroll back up so I can see it left click drag my skeleton over and copy here and I'm gonna F2 we're gonna call this SK underscore polygon and we're gonna go in here and we don't have anything in here for our preview mesh what's happening bro you missed out on a video earlier about this um, the custom movement animation or custom movement asset pack if you don't have it go to the marketplace it's still free until midnight so you need to go get it now right now it's cool um, I don't have anything in here yet but I can go ahead and where was it blueprints no it is pretty cool um, if you want to add uh, working ladders and rock climbing to where you can actually crawl across different things and stuff like that um, it's pretty cool what's up Chris good to see you back too but yeah the, the this is really cool. You'll you'll see what it, what what it looked like in in just a minute. Let me uh, continue on with the torture of, of I mean of of retargeting. So we we'll go back to my people, and here's where it's going to be fun. And because there's so many, I had to pick one with two versions of every freaking character. Um, but I'm just going to do it and be done with it nothing else I love this asset pack because of the skeleton and because of the um, the shark <laughs> so you got a couple different skeletons I love just the bear skeleton with nothing on them uh, that's probably what I'm gonna retarget for my character so with all of my skeletal meshes selected for there just right click assign skeleton SK polygon accept so this is gonna take about four or five hours so no, it doesn't take that long. It's annoying because there is no, as far as I know, a batch way of doing this. As close as I can get to a batch, at least. But you'll end up doing this for every skeletal mesh, for every Cindy character you're going to add in from any asset pack with one minor exception, which is a couple of the giant characters from the, uh, like, adventure um, adversaries or whatever or adventure characters pack and it's like the the troll and the, the big characters they just don't seem to retarget correctly whatever you do them in bulk like this um, what happens is they tend to be folded in half backwards at the uh, the waist or like the middle of their spine and it looks really weird you do the same process all over again and it works just fine but they don't work the same whenever you do it this way for that skeleton you have to make a separate skeleton just for that so now we'll do save all and then we'll go back to our our skeleton that we put into the character folder SK polygon now we can select a preview mesh which I want skeleton apply to asset because I like this little dude. He's cool. He's my favorite character of all the, the Cinti asset packs. <laughs> that and the hot dog, oddly enough. We go to retargeting manager. He's already set to humanoid, so we're good to go there. And we're going to hit save. So our polygon character is set and ready to rock and roll for our retargeting. And we're going to do this by breaking it up into two different folders. And we're going to do unarmed. Create that folder. And in the custom movement example character uh, we actually need to go down to um, the character folder because we're gonna have um, custom movement animation blueprint and a bunch of animations and locomotion um, there's also gonna be some animation montages and uh, blend spaces and stuff like that but we're gonna go ahead and it's in the meshes folder under characters 
open up home cheese here. He's already set to humanoid. Beautiful. So that's good. But he's in an A pose or Y pose, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to do what we always do and take the upper arm, raise it up by 50, both sides. No, that's 45. There you go, 50. And the lower arm down by 10. Um, I got snapping set to 5. It should be at 10. Um, I'm just going to undo everything because I don't. All right, 50, 50, still looks like it's down a little bit, um, down by 10, and the hand up by 10, lower arm back by 30, so we just need to make sure you go down by 10 back by 30 and a hand up by 10. So that should get him in a T pose. The legs are a little bit far apart but I'm not going to screw with that because then you got to readjust the feet. But whatever. We're going to hit modify pose and use current pose and save. Save all and here's where the praying begins or the foul language begins because what we need to do is we'll start off with our animation ABP custom movement and I'm going to take a look at it and is this okay this is actually the climbing the ladder one um, that's not the one I want to start with there is another animation blueprint there's two animation blueprints that come with this um, setup right here ABP example character this should be a pretty much standard average everyday animation blueprint it's gonna handle your you know your custom movement stuff It's gonna be added in with this but this is pretty much your standard this is what we're looking for first as our unarmed animation blueprint so I'm gonna just right click on that retarget animation blueprint blah 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 you know the, the story and we're going to actually hit cancel I'm going to click on it first. I'm going to hit F2 and I'm going to control C. And then I'm going to do this. So I've got the original name in here. So I'm going to replace that with unarmed ABP. So I know that this is a different name than what theirs is. So I'm going to hit change and I'm going to go to my character folder, animations, unarmed and OK, then retarget. It's the same that I do all the freaking time. So now we have our city uh, skeleton dude set up to do our, our regular animation stuff. So now let's do um, another new folder. And we need um, ladder. Um, we'll just call it ladders. I, lack of a better name. Now we want to go from that first animation blueprint we just did was example character. So now we need to go back to this one, ABP custom movement. And again, I'm going to F2, Control C. So I've got the name in there. I'm going to right click and we'll go try this one. Cross your fingers that won't have as much work to do afterwards, but I'm pretty sure something's not going to translate over just correctly. So we're going to call this our ladders ABP. Change the folder, character, animation, ladder. Okay, and retarget. Now, okay, we got our montages are there. Our animations and our blend spaces are all there. Okay, so our actual character that we're using is 
Um, where did I see you? Example character. Is this guy Rod Hell? So we're going to open him before we're going to go back in there. And again, we're still using all the original stuff. Nothing's changed. Um, let's go ahead and add in zones. First off, we're going to drag one of these guys out and we'll put some of these on the wall. And the arrow is already facing the correct direction. So in placing the handholds, and if you guys saw from the last video, essentially what we're doing here, and I'm just going to start, screw it, I'm going to start right here. Symmetry, you know me. Control C, Control V. So we're going to try putting it that far apart. Control C, Control V, and there. Actually, Control V one more time. Let's spread them across. Probably going to have to add another one in there because that's not going to work. Um, but we shall see. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and do it like that and then try to add one more in. So I know it should work. Then with it selected, details panel. Update near holds. I'll hit that button and you can see now they've connected left to right. And if I walk over here and jump, there we go. And now we can climb side to side. So I'll go ahead and grab all these guys. Control C, Control V, and start positioning them. I'm going to add one more row down just to be on the safe side, and then I'm going to go ahead and just paste in the, the rest that I need to go all the way to the top. So for those of you who didn't see this in the other video, um, this is how easy it is to create those. Um, now with this final row up here, click on Is Top Hold, and then I'm going to do update near holds and now all of them should work. So now I'll we'll go over here. Still need a few more on the downside, but I can just do this. Jump and make use of it. And now whenever I get to the top, you'll automatically climb up there. Get back close to them. And now we can do left, right, up, down, and that kind of stuff. Spacebar will let us jump off. So I just want to make sure all this stuff was working before we actually jumped in here and did the conversion. Now I'm going to do a stretchable ladder here. And we're going to move this down to there. We're going to change the step count to let's try 12. Oh, a little bit too many. Change it to 11. And it's going to move it down just a hair. So the top rung is right there, the, the top. And if we hit play, we'll walk over here. And it should work just fine. And walk over. There we go. And it'll start climbing the ladder. And again, you can't shift left and right when you're on the ladder. But, yeah, you're fine. So that's cool. You get to the bottom, he'll step away from it. So let's see how bad we screwed up on doing the... Um, the retargeting. So we'll go back to our example character and let's since I know which one I want to use from the the assets for the peoples we want this guy the skeleton so I'm gonna come in here go to viewport and I'm gonna close down all these extra things. I'm just gonna leave uh, viewport construction script and event graph that's all I need. So I'm gonna take this select my mesh change this actually I don't need to do that I just need to click the arrow animation class and unarmed animation blueprint compile and save now we are there we can jump we can walk around we can do our thing but what happens when we go to our ladder okay so that we're gonna have to, to fix as well I knew that was going to happen. Um, 
So now we need to find the reference to. If you're looking here, um, oh, update custom movement, BP custom movement. Just need to find the reference where it's calling to that animation blueprint. Whenever it says you're at the ladder, now use this this animation blueprint. Um, update custom movement. I don't like the name of this asset pack because custom movement to me says you're cust using a custom movement or a different type movement or whatever, but custom movement's the name of the asset pack. BP custom com custom movement component. Um, we know that um, we're good on walking. Just got to find that reference. Uh, let's see here. Custom movement component. Look under components. Um, camera, camera boom. Custom component. Turn rate is custom movement. Um, character movement and custom movement component. Let's see uh, the timelines for your ladder movements and stuff. Animation montages. This is empty. Um, I didn't change that though. Entering ladder top. That's entering. So, um, enter top. We're just going to try this. And I can see the, um, the skeleton dude there. Entering ladder bottom. Uh, let's see here. Let's enter ladder bottom. Ladder empty bottom. Oh, wrong. So since there's going to be two of them named the same thing, you just uh, look at the, the thumbnail. If it's the UE4 mannequin, then you selected the wrong one. Exiting ladder top. Exit... Ladder exit top. You can also mouse over it and see what's what, but this is ladder exit top. Wrong one, so then just click the other one. Exiting ladder bottom. Ladder exit bottom. The names are just a little bit off, but okay. We'll just see if this is going to fix the problem. Enter climbing top. Climbing enter top. That's excellent. Okay. So exit climbing top. Climbing exit top. I think that's right. I mean, let me just glance over this one more time. <laughs> Exiting climber top is climbing exit top. Enter climbing top is climbing enter top. Exiting ladder bottom. Ladder exit bottom. Exiting ladder top, ladder exit top. Entering ladder bottom, ladder enter bottom. So I'm guessing these are right. And entering ladder top, ladder enter top. So I'm going to, I'm just going to see. So, let's run our skeleton over here, and automatically goes into a T-pose, which means it's not talking to the right stuff. So, we don't need the polygon thing open anymore. Our animations should be good. we got climbing. It made a new folder there. Um, no, that's theirs. Um, climbing, ladder, locomotion... All right, so what else are we missing here? This is the joy of retargeting, because these are the things that you don't always see, and you really got to figure out what's what. Um, was it in the ladder? That's our mesh reference there. So that's where we would delete that mesh if once we place it into the map. Um, 
where this right here says static mesh reference uh, is your actual reference here. Um, I probably should promote this to a variable and then plug that variable into here and then use that variable then being exposed so that I can change that as needed. But <coughs> something for later on. Um, this might be where we're at. Um, and no. I'm feeling those weren't going to be it, but it was worth a shot to look for. Um, there's nothing in a construction script, so everything would have to be in here. Um, input axis. This is a standard gamepad input, which I'm not using. Mouse input, that's fine. Control rotation. If the character is custom is in custom movement, it will escape its custom movement. Wow. Um, this is the downfall of, of dealing with something made by somebody who does not speak English. This is um, the creator of this asset was I think Korean. Um, if the character is in custom movement, it will escape its custom movement. Eh? What? I get kind of what it's saying. So if you're using the custom movement of climbing up a ladder and you do the input action jump, which is spacebar, so if you hit the spacebar, it will then jump off the ladder. Exit custom movement, BP custom movement component. So let's look for custom movement component. If we open that. And holy crap, speckle. Um, holy shit, and fall back in it. All right, so let's start from the top here and ladder entering movement. Well, that might be what we're. That's middle. Entering top. Ladder entering top. Exiting bottom. And overlap custom movement. Well, we'll just start with one and work our way through here. Um, Overlapping custom move zone. With having nothing we've selected so far, I'm going to scroll down. we got the montage references there, but I just want to see what it's going to do and how it's going to call them in here. On before start custom movement. Current custom movement zone, character reference, um, okay, let's move to the next one. Broadcast entering ladder middle, because this is replicated, so once we figure out this part, we should be good to go for continuing with replication. Custom movement, set movement mode custom, ladder, um... Location and rotation. That's all lovely. Uh, if you guys can, can spot this before I do, then let me know. Um, you could also have your your project running in the in playing around with this in the background. But um, yeah, setting custom movement on the ladder. If you see it somewhere, let me know. Update entering transition. During the ladder, middle. Move mode is set to climbing. It's pulling that from enumerator list. Overlapped climbing holds. Entering bottom. Holy crap. Um, entering the ladder, bottom. Let's see, broadcasting, entering. So that would be like the, the client call. And that would be the server call. Oh, shit. 
Um, you know, see, I just tried it on the ladder. I didn't try it on the the pegs. We were working not, just fine before, but when we moved to the skeleton, see, we're still doing it, but it's not doing the animations. Ladder is totally broken. So we try to do the ladder, it's it's not working at all. We tried you know, if we from starting from the bottom it's completely broken, and when we get to the top, it's no longer working. So I, I don't know exactly what the direct call is. So we do that. We do the custom movement component and scroll down. And I've already put these montages in here. But something has to be calling the um, the actual thing itself. The actual mon the, the animation blueprint. So I'm actually going to look at the animation blueprint. See if there's something I forgot in here, which I didn't. I shouldn't have had to do anything. Yeah, there's a crap ton of timelines, and I'm hoping that's not a direct thing with the timelines, because if there's a lot of editing the timelines, then there's my kryptonite, you know. Owner custom movement is valid. Initialized collapsed graph. Um, I'll peek at that if I need to. It is climbing. So let's look at the anim graph. Because in the anim graph is what's going to say, okay, you know, as ladder up loop, um, ladder position is climbing. Local to component and component to local. Transform, modify a bone. Um, yeah, those timelines. Um, input action jump turn. Update custom movement. Um, let's see here. The hell, that's one big long ass frickin' um, custom event with nothing plugged in it. Same thing with that one. Um, Begin play, which was just my fix the controller thing. Update custom movement, and then it refers to custom movement here. Update custom movement, which that is in the custom movement blueprint, which we've already looked at. Um, character movement, yeah, and that's a custom reference. Custom movement mode, root motion, ladder motion movement, and climbing movement. Um, let's see here. Character, character movement. It's the same reference we already had before. Move updated component. Oh. Transforms all these character movement references, and it's referring to a um, current type character movement component. And uh, um, <laughs> yeah, the timelines themselves are um, a 
entering ladder, top, middle, bottom. And that's just a reference to the actual thing here. Um, and Timeline curve. Um, yep. Did not help. You got all these animation montage references here in the custom movement component. Um, I'm thinking maybe I have to do that, do them as well. There is no overall reference, so... If I close this and open back up, there was, but... I'm gonna probably shoot myself in my own foot, but I'm gonna change these. My... What, six different um, montage references here. Am entering ladder. You can see it's kind of cut off there a little bit. I'm actually going to scale it over this way. So, entering ladder top. Ladder enter top. Is this one? No, the other one. Ladder enter top. Okay, so entering ladder bottom entering ladder bottom ladder um, ladder enter bottom Exit ladder top. I'm just trying to. I'm going slow so I can make sure I'm getting these in the right location. Exit ladder bottom. So ladder exit bottom. Climbing enter top. Climbing exit top. All right, let's see if I fixed anything or broke it this time. Absolutely broke it. Well, I didn't break it. It's still broken. So what about jumping over to these? Eh. If I try to go to the top, you can see he's back in the idle animation again, but it's just not doing it. So there's still something else that's saying, hey, use this animation blueprint. Because there is an actual animation blueprint associated with this. Um, let's see something here. Um, animation, custom movement. Actually, I did, did not need to open it. Let me close everything else back down for right now. Um, I'm going to do a save all, whether it's good or not. And we'll do this. Um, bulk edit via property matrix. Um, validate assets and dependencies. Select actors using this asset. No actors found. Um, thought it was a way of just saying Let's see, custom movement. Yeah, that's what we're actually looking at. Um, I thought it was a way of actually finding references to it 
what blueprints referenced it. View documentation. Reference viewer. All right, so that might be. Let's go full screen with that. All right, so am climbing. Okay, climbing inner top, exit top, blah blah blah. blah. These are the montages. These are the individual animations. Um, standard macros, custom movement component. Custom movement character and climbing transition curve. So, th this is what's actually referencing it here the example character and the unarmed ABP. So, apparently, there is still a reference in here somewhere. So, let's actually look. Because if there's actually a reference in the, the animation blueprint, that we're using. Um, event custom uh, event blueprint initialize animation, and there was nothing else here, so it's got to be in the anim graph. Um, sub anim instance. Slot custom movement. And it referred directly to that other animation custom movement. So if this is actually referring to an animation blueprint, then we need to see animation custom movement sub animation instance will apply custom movement animation so apparently that's there this is what's calling reference to it instance class ABP underscore custom movement Change that over, hit compost, save, and let's see what happens now. Ah! Get to the top, and it works. Get to the top, and let's go down. That's cool. Let's jump off mid cycle. And what happens here? Yay! We got it! <laughs> Holy shit. That's where... I knew this shit existed somewhere. By using the uh, reference viewer, I was able to see what called what. Whenever I saw that my new blueprint was actually calling to this, I was able to actually get out of it and just change it right here, sub-anim instance, and just go to right there, setting instance class, and change it over to my new animation blueprint. Yay! It only took, what, 25, 30 frickin' minutes to fix that? <laughs> but we now have a Cindy Studios character that can walk over here and climb a magic ladder. Now, you notice the hands aren't in the right position, but don't care. Not something I'm going to cry about right now. But we can come over here to our handhold points. We know how to delete the, um, the meshes from that, so that's not a big issue. I'm happy. I'm fine. Everything's good. <sighs> so, since we're good with that, let's actually go into our, our Polygon Pirates meshes and let's look for something that we can use to climb on. Alright, so, we knew that um, there was that one weird looking tower thing that um, it's curved. A rickety dock. Was that really rough looking tower thing that did have a ladder on it? But let's also go to props, see if there's a ladder in here. Um, cannons, chests. 
Ah, a letter. Doesn't really go anywhere right now, but it's okay. We can still take this. Rotate it a 90. And I'm going to go take it. Did I rotate it in the right direction? Yeah. We wanted the pegs to the outside. So let's take this and... Put this here. Now what I'm going to do is go back to this guy. Ladder. And I'm going to change the step width scale to 0.5. We're going to move it over just a little bit, and that looks like it's going to be just about perfect. Now, the ladder that I just put in here is the rungs aren't lining up, so let's actually get it relatively close. They're not going to line up, not going to be perfect, but let's see how it looks. We'll get rid of the green here in just a minute. Walk over, and probably want to have it pushed closer to the wall. But it gives us a functional ladder system now. I'd probably make it a little bit smaller on the um, the green, um, just because the um, yes, yeah, the placement's not going to be just right. Um, well, let's click on that and let's scale it to 0.3, so we can narrow it down. So it fits more in between the ladder itself because if you're off by a little bit then your character won't look like he's necessarily climbing on the side of it so again you know this is you know up against the building and it's not quite perfect and I think that would be absolutely good enough. It's actually he's pretty close on the uh, thing. To get rid of the um, the actual green pegs, um, all you'd have to do is go into the um, the construction script of the ladder blueprint itself, and scroll over to where it says um, the the new mesh, and we know that it's sm underscore cube, but for right now I'm going to change it to none. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm, let's see how bad it looks if we do ladder. It's probably going to be really screwy looking. Yeah, let's see. There's the ladder. Because of the way it's scaled, um, it's just going to look crappy. So I'm just going to select none, compost, and save. And we can just place it down, make sure it works, and then remove the... Um, the static mesh so it looks like when we walk over here we're now just climbing up the ladder but I would leave that on there in here so select mesh and cube we'll just leave it in because when you're actually creating your maps you kinda wanna see it so you can you know that they're lined up just right um, but now I'm curious though what happens if we angle it yes there is a mouse in my pocket by the way um, so if we angle it will he still be climbing the ladder if it's angled yes he will delightful yo what's up I'm enjoying this asset um, so we just did that and we'll do this and we can do that like I said, we can get rid of the green after yeah you know, we've got all of our ladders placed that we want to use and stuff but and it's not perfect hand holds and all that stuff but our details hide it run um, if there was um, an actual static mesh reference here, then you could do um, um, like show actor hidden in game. Probably, let's see if, if that'll actually do it. Uh, 
Dedicated server is okay. Yeah, we can do a hide in game. That's fine. So that works too. Don't have the angles just right and everything, but um, dedicated server is one of the few things that really needs to have a um, uh, a C plus plus element to it. It's one of the few things that's not necessarily a hundred percent blueprint, but yeah. I don't have a way of testing them, so I haven't really done anything with them. But with dedicated server, you actually have to run a uh, one C++ file in your project that tells everything that, okay, we're doing um, uh, uh, dedicated server on this. And since I, I've never really, I mean, I do need to have a dedicated server system set up for it, uh, for certain aspects of certain gaming, uh, my simple multiplayer Steam template just it gets me by. Um, it works great. It's bulletproof, 100%. You know, never had any problems with it. But um, it's not dedicated. Well, see, I don't do anything with C++. I mean, that's... Like I said, I, I, I do all blueprints. Not because I'm stupid. Well, partially because I'm stupid. But, um... <laughs> um I just... I've never taken the time to really worry about it. To actually, um... To learn it. And I should, I really should, but I just haven't. Is that a new shipwreck? There was the two broken pieces of the shipwreck. But I don't recall seeing this static mesh. Um... Show it off the side, but since we can use the ladder system now and we can use the sing single handholds, I did. Um, I did some videos on doing a battle royale game. Um, in fact, I've even got should be a link in the um, yeah, in my Discord channel and uh, BBG demos section of my Discord channel. No, I don't want you to frickin' full screen. I just want you to drag your ass in here so I can show something. Um, this is the latest version of Battle Royale game from the live streams. It right there is actually a demo of what I was doing in the live streams. And, um, it's actually... I couldn't come up with a good name for it, so I... And, and I'm not a fan of uh, Fortnite, so I called it Fart Night. Lack of a better name. Um... But yeah, I, I did a um, uh, and it utilizes a um, uh, an asset pack that's available in the marketplace. I don't have mine properly updated right now, but um, I need to get it updated and get back to work on that because they've added new stuff to it since I've done anything with it. Um, but really quickly, and then I'll get back into fiddling with this ladder stuff. Happy this is working now, and, and I retargeted it correctly to um, uh, the Cindy characters and found out what the issue was and why it wasn't working. And it just had to be one little trigger, and it was using that one little trick to show the references to what was there. So this is the uh, the demo. You can actually download this demo from. Um, actually, I think it's still on my Google Drive account. But um, when you load it up, you can actually change your character. Um, and then, say if I want to use this guy here, now it's set up, you, can, you need to, to have the IP of the... Oh, you got that? Yeah, um, so this actually works good, and it, it's very playable. Um, click on host game, solo, max players, I had um, two maps in here, D-Day Beach and Cinti Island. You can go with um, LAN or Friendly Fire, um yeah. Um that one actually worked. Uh, we we played it in multiplayer and, and had other people joining in, but uh I thought it actually worked just fine. But my simple multiplayer Steam template is something that I I do and um I've done a bunch of little demos with it as well. 
Um, what the hell? I'm sure I got something in here. Just opening up another project here, or another um, a standalone. The multiplayer replication is like a dark art. I mean, some things are are normally easy to do, but then some are not. But my my simple multiplayer, you can see, you got the Steam thing here. With my Steam username and avatar is popping up right there. The multiplayer host, and this is yeah, this is peer to peer, so it's it's not a dedicated server. Um, so whenever you go in, this actually is um. I accidentally deleted this project and it pisses me off. This was a, a demo I was working on just for myself and my team, but um, I mean, sitting down in a chair, that was all working replicated. Um, you could actually do some shooting at each other and shooting at bots, add it in a, um, an emote system. Uh, The V key would go bring up your MP5, shoot some automatic. There was a um, tab key. You can add bots in here, and one, five, ten, or whatever. And then once you're in here, you kill him. He despawns, and another one will spawn in. Or you can add a total of ten bots. tends to be a little bit weird, but um, you can hit that and remove bots. So now whenever you kill them, they won't respawn. So, But you had changeable emotes. I did all kind of crap. I already had another map that was actually um, for conducting team meetings and shit like that. And a workable first aid kit. Um, but yeah, I, mean, I was just doing this for a team to be able to sit here and like, okay, let's let's have a meeting and to come in here and sit down. Or go up there on the uh, the meeting room. I actually created a whole separate meeting room. You know, even had teleport. Um, yeah, I, I was making some good progress on this. But, but yeah, the, the, the simple multiplayer Steam template that I use is peer-to-peer. -peer, and it uses the Steam network. It works. Yeah, that way you don't have to worry about setting up a dedicated server. It's just is something that uh, if you're testing out multiplayer and you want to be able to play with your friends, um, everybody's got a freaking Steam account. I mean, hell, if you don't have a Steam account, then um, yeah, get one. <laughs> you know, it's not like it's expensive. It's free. But, uh, you know, I think you got to have like a $5 purchase to be able to um, do certain functions or whatever. So, I mean, it's not like it's a hard thing. Everybody's got a game that they own on Steam, you know? Right, I'm just putting this in here so we can get to our boat. Climb up the ladder. A little slow on the ladder, but it's kind of a more realistic speed, I guess. So get on a ship, and if we wanted to now, we could actually put um, the ladder mechanism on. I guess you'd have to jump up on here, and then figure out a way of setting that up to where it works on that. Or if you wanted to, um, hello, you have no testicles, sir. Um, not that I've ever looked at, you know, a skeleton to see if he has nuts. Why can't you go up that damn set of stairs? Come on, man. It's just a damn set of stairs. But, like the rope, if you wanted to set up the ladder system on the rope thing, that's good. You might actually be able to just use um, these handhold pieces. Um, that's in custom movement, zones, and holds. So I guess if you wanted to get your character to start climbing up on there, you'd have to put them on the side, and then corner, and then around. Um, let's do save all, save selected. Let's go back to the 
demo map from the asset pack. Now we have our character. So we can set up whatever we want, wherever we want for these handhold positions. And again, you know, you can click on it, edit blueprint, and you can hide it in the game if you want to. I'm going to leave them in here just simply because it's a good show and tell system. Oh no! Oh, it's because we have it hidden. That's why. Um, so you wouldn't really want to always have it hidden if you don't have a mesh already on there for your ladder. So we need to add a skeletal mesh there so that I know that it's still there. So we'll go back to our items or props. Props. And letter was right there. We can see it right there, so we know it's there. And most of the ladder pieces are there, so let's do it that way. And that looks good. But since it doesn't go all the way to the top, what I would end up doing is bringing the ladder up so that the top rung is at the top, and then adding a second ladder in. Now, if you're trying to do full custom ladders, there is other ways of doing the meshes and stuff like this. So you can actually have scalable meshes. So like a, it acts almost like a spline actor. Yeah. Well, it's kind of not perfect, but we get the point. And there was also that other thing that was in here that was like a. It was on the the demonstration map for you know Cindy Studios one so I'm just gonna do a save all save selected go to their map for demonstration map and we'll just fly our butts over there so with having these pieces I mean hell if you wanted to you could put those uh, handhold pieces along the side of, of like say this so your character could just shimmy across the end of it, and then the very last one, where you'd want them to be able to get up on top, um, they could just press the to go forward and able to climb up on top of it. So I mean, you could do all kind of different stuff with these things. It was over here. Now was it just a ladder that was attached to that, or what was it? There's actually a hole in the middle. Rickety Tower. So there it is. So let's actually go to my test map. Oh shit. Um, <laughs> I had it selected and then deselected it. Whatever I changed to the other freaking map. Um, but it was called Rickety Tower. And it was in buildings right there. So let's actually just drag this set of a gun over here. Now, for functionality on the ladder, we'll go to the zones folder. We don't need characters open, we need the zone stretchable ladder and I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it and get it just about right 
Um, width, let's go with 0.3. Eh, let's try 0.4, should be good. So, position it like so. And it's alright there. Now, how many freaking steps are we going to need? Um, step count 20. Damn, that was close. Um, 23. Meh. Let's, um, step width margin. Yeah, let's try 22. And then we'll just back up just a hair and raise it. Oh, actually, yeah, that may be about right. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, yeah, we want to raise it up because the bottom is sticking through the ground. His leg stuck into the ground. So we don't want that to be a thing. So all we're going to do is just raise it up a little bit. We'll probably go down just a hair more, but. Ah, shit. Yeah, the, the roof is too low. So you really can't do anything when you get up here. So that kind of sucks. Except jump off. Um, show one more thing here, and I'll take a break. This is, um, between the two videos, we're talking about almost three hours of, of streaming. Um, new pie window. So, okay, here's our client. Again, we can go left and right, up and down. And I'm going to run the server over, and... It is replicated. So you can see there's camera co collisions on it. Yeah, get some, boy. Get it. <laughs> get all up in that skeleton butt. <laughs> yes, I'm a sick old fucker. What are you, you know, what are you going to do? On the ladder. There we go. So the replication works. Again, to get off of these, you just hit the space bar to, to jump off. So yes, and you can actually climb up through somebody else. <laughs> but as we see, it works, and we can retarget it to Cinti Assets. Now, we don't have to stay the skeleton. And once we've already got to that point, we can actually go back to... We didn't move our player character. Go to, go to here, example character, and... No, I don't want to change your freaking name. Go to the damn blueprint. Damn you. All right, so there click on my mesh. Any of the polygon characters that I want to use now, no problem. What are the other skeletons? Um, first mate. Deck hand. I said deck hand. Get your deck out of your hands. Um, pirate captain. Compost, save, and now it can be Captain Pegleg. Yes, I need to move it a little bit closer together, but whatever, it's working. Now, this also works now that the, since the way that I did it to retarget the characters in, I don't have to stick with the Pirates theme. If I want to go in here and add in. Um, Oh, uh, 
whatever. Like, uh, I'll just... So if we're doing a... Um... Let's have the Explorer kit, because this can be quick and easy. This will work with any of the... Um... Uh, Cine Studios projects, like I mentioned, this is only gonna be 13 megs too, so already there. So now, since I've got all those, but what happens now if I want to use a different asset pack from Cine Studios and different characters now? Because uh, now we got characters, we got two new characters in this one. But what if it was the other asset packs or whatever else? Um, what if I want to use Homegirl here um, or the guy? They need the hair attached and other crap too, but we're not going to worry about that. This is just going to show you as an example of what it would be like. All you got to do is nothing with the skeleton. Just grab your two characters or however many characters are in that particular asset pack. Right click, skeleton, assign skeleton, SK polygon. So if, if you did it, you see there's all kind of different IKs and stuff that are need, need to be added. Just click OK and it's done. SK Polygon, accept, and do that for each of the new ones you put in there. Go to your actual character blueprint, go to your mesh. Now, just need to find them on the long list of, of characters you can use now. Explorer, mail, there you go. No retargeting, no nothing else, because they're the same freaking skeleton. Nothing else to retarget. And they just work. You don't have to do anything else. Just right-click on, on the skeletal um, meshes, and you can select them all, and right-click, select skeleton, assign skeleton, pick the skeleton you're, you're doing it to, which is SK Polygon, the one that I created. You're done doesn't matter how many of the asset packs you put in here you could put the simple um, at the instead of the polygon series you could put the simple ones in here and you can retarget them the same way that I did earlier and all of the simple characters will work um, but now if I if I choose also I can go in here and add other asset packs in um, I could add in polygon Western or the farm pack highest pack any of the other packs and it's the same principle for adding in the characters with the exception of one and it was the um, I'll find the exact name here fantasy rivals pack the three or four giant characters are the ones that don't retarget correctly this way they do if you do them separately but they won't share the same skeleton as the regular size characters you could even bring in the frickin' minis if you want to, and they will retarget the same. They will do the same without having to retarget them. So if you do the uh, the the polygon mini, um, in fact, I've got uh, mini fantasy characters and mini fantasy character pack. We got two different ones there. You could bring those in. They, they use the same same retargeting. So easy, 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 easy. All right, so for the dedicated server thing, really not much I can do to help on that right now because I really haven't. I've asked three or four other people to actually look into it and, and help me come up with a good way that I can explain how to do it and to make it simple and easy to work with. I just can't do it on on my network here um, to get it to work correctly. Uh, same thing with my freaking ad system. I'm going to actually have to delete the server somewhere so that I can actually do it. But, um, I, the, like I, said, I use my simple multiplayer Steam template, and it's a peer to peer, and it uses Steam architecture. So, you actually have to have Steam running in the background for it to work correctly. Um, but, you know, it's bulletproof, it works, does a great job. Um, I've used it on all sorts of projects. That I've had no issues with it. It's it'll work on pretty much any version of of UE4. I mean, I've it, actually getting the characters to work will will spend you more time. 
say if you're you're trying to set up your montages and everything else, dude's leaning forward an awful lot. These are their animations, not mine. So see how far forward they're leaning. It's like the character is pushed forward. Um, I'm gonna change characters really quickly, and then we're gonna call this video done. Oh, the sharks. I guess I can show you guys that. Um, let's go to the Polygon Pirates. I want to go back to my my Skelly dude. I like my my Skelly. Um, but I really like I really do like the shark. It's like one of my favorite things. That's not a character, but there we go. Done. Now we can run around as a Skelly. So let's say that we've got water in here. Um, environments. Let's actually put water in here. Okay, okay we got water. It's not going to act like water. We're not going to be able to swim or anything. But let's go ahead and make a... Um, uh, Character folder. I don't need the animations folder right now. It says characters. Let's do um, blueprints. This is just a little bit of extra bonus in here for showing how to, to actually make the shark look like he's actually moving around. Just short term. You could add pawn sensing to it and have him to where he goes toward the player, but you know, just quick and easy. Um, no, crap. I don't want that. Um, blueprint. Do a pawn or character. Um, I usually just copy over the player character, so, and that works. But we'll try it with this. I, Close it. Rename it. Sharky. Full blueprint editor. We're going to go in here. Creatures. We want the shark skeleton. And go to mesh. Shark. Animation class we're not going to do anything with. We're going to use a... Because if you look at viewport our shark is just doing nothing so we need to do use animation asset there's only one form and there we go not necessarily worried about the capsule that it's it's got in here let's go to our character blueprints and let's drop sharky in the water um, we hit play, you can see he'll drop down. So we need our water just a little bit deeper. Or we can actually come in here, and go to our mesh, and lower him down. Hit play. And that's better. That, that's going to be really good. So there, we have our shark. Compost, save. Uh, next thing we need to do is go into our volumes, get a nav mesh bounds. Zero, 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 and we're going to scale it by, I forget how big it is, says, 10 by 10, that's good enough, hit P, P, there we go, so we can see that it'll actually work, go in here, go to your event graph, Just quick and cheesy. Um, variables is moving or swimming is digging in his butt, whatever you want. Um, our branch is moving Go like that. There, the answer is false. Then yeah, I move to p 
pawn, I'll just get a reference to self. Shouldn't have to, but do it anyway. I'm not going towards any particular character or destination where we're going to. Random point in navigatable radius. Um, radius. Twenty five hundred, that sounds good enough. Origin. We need to get a reference to our mesh. Get world location, plug that into here. And from here, on success and on fail. So right here we're gonna do set is moving to true on the top executable, so we know that we are moving. So if we're not moving, then we can start doing this. If we are moving, we're not going to do anything. So then we're going to drag from here and on success, run delay, and on fail, run this delay. From here, we want to get random float in range. So we'll do between one and three. So between one and three seconds, and then at that point we will set is moving to fault. So he's gonna swim around, go to his location. When he gets there, he's gonna wait between one and three seconds, and then keep moving again. I said compile and save, thank you. Um there you go. He's gonna swim around wait one to three seconds and since he's moving sideways we need to rotate him to the left there we go the arrows going that way I should have paid attention to that before but all right so there he swims in the right direction so now we know we have a, a shark swing around why you messing around with that ladder there, stupid? You went stuck on the ladder. And if you wanted to add um, where he sees the player and comes after him, then add component, pawn sensing, and select it. Look at our viewport. There we go. Change his view angle to 60. Compo save. Come in here, pawn sensing, right click, add event, on C pawn. I never did get on here pawn to work or the noise. Uh, what is the name of our freaking character? Um, custom movement. Characters. Or was it in blueprints? Yeah, blueprints, example character. Um, I'm going to hit F2, Control C, hit that. Um, pawn. Cast to our character. On T pawn. So that's the pawn. That's who we're going to go after. Um, essentially, we're going to do the, the same thing up here. Come from here, A, I, move to, you can do location or actor, um, goal actor is there, going to get, um, let's see, do I need to add a controller to it, A, I, controller, um, Get AI controller may work. And do you work or do I need to fix something else to you? Yeah, I'll have to tweak a few other things on here. Um, I usually don't use that one anyway. I usually use the same one we used up top AI move two. Just a straight AI move to. 
And who I'm moving to is target actor. Um, shouldn't have to, to use that destination. We'll do um, acceptable radius. Should change to 50, so they're not like on top of you. You can also do stop on overlap, but um, it's just gonna be stupid. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll come back and fix that later. I'm not worried about that, but yeah, you can set it up to where on C pawn event to actually come after the player. That way they can you can have sharks in the water patrolling around. Um, if he's moving too fast, you can actually go in there and where okay, Sharky edit blueprint. So if it's too fast, you go to character movement and max walk speed. We'll change that to 300. Um, I should slow him down a little bit. There we go. So we got a shark that works, and we got ladders at work. And you also got the little climbing pegs at work as well. And there was much rejoicing. Yay, splashdown. And the only downfall is, well, we have a hollow anus there, but uh, this tower right here is not set up for physically being used. Uh, we get up here, we really can't do anything because the distance between the floor and the roof is really, really bad. Yeah, I don't, I don't like Blackboard for AI. Everything works just fine. I mean, even in 420, whenever I go back in there and do a 420 uh, um, point three, I can go back in there and it's still having issues with um, not just with the, uh, the AI, but also with um, 422 is, is giving me issues with using montages as, as well. So the things that used to work in 417 and 418. 419 no longer work in 428, 421, 422, and 423 is going to be coming out soon. And I don't like being forced to, to do that whenever shit that I had working before was working. And I, I shouldn't have to start doing things different for something that works and it wasn't broken. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And they're fixing things that aren't broke. And things that used to work don't work anymore. And there's not a whole lot of good documentation out there on how to frickin' do anything to begin with. If it wasn't for people making YouTube videos about how to, to do shit, um, I don't think anybody could learn this without spending two years of their frickin' life just sitting there going through, well, what happens when you do this? What happens when you do that? You know, because like this, this works just fine. But whenever the AI moved to, you know, with the pawn sensing and everything else, it was working normal, and now it, it breaks. And then whenever I try to do something in a video, that's something that I've done a dozen plus freaking times, and now suddenly it doesn't work anymore, and I'm looking like a dumbass, I don't need help looking like a dumbass. I can do just fine on my own. Um... I've done the AI move to thing a thousand friggin' times, it seems like. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Save all, save selected. We got it working. Shouldn't close down the whole damn project. Um, I don't think I've got any projects handy that are already open and everything else that. Um, got utilizing any of the AI move to stuff. I know I had a bunch in the past. Like um Wild West demo. That's dynamic combat. Show many things. I need to get my uh, my updates done on on this one. Close out this one I'll just show just a little bit of this this project, you guys have probably seen this one before anyway, but um, I haven't done anything on this in quite a while. 
Um, with the Battle Royale project, I quit doing anything on that one simply because um, I haven't updated the asset pack. So again, barely a menu that I've changed from my, my normal thing here. If you want to do single player, you just hit single player. There's only one map in this particular project, so it wasn't anything. Well, there's actually more, but there's only one that I've. I don't understand why it does that. You know, the, it renders in at blue first. Yes, I've had the uh, the hover bike working, the hover cars working before. I was adding some life to in here, like the guys sitting over there. The pedestrian animation pack is damn worth the money. Well worth the damn money. Bouncer at the door, and the girls up on the stage, and bartenders back there. And you look up, you got some girls up there just waving and dancing. And instead of walking, you can just jump on your hoverboard and kind of ride around a little bit. That's just when I got bored, was just fiddle farting around with this thing. But you can also, you know, come over here. Use my little springboards. Go up to hidden locations that you're not usually supposed to go into. I added animation to where the uh, satellite dish, the Chinese food thing, and the hamburger on the other side actually rotates. Um, was also doing... Uh, Replacing some of the signs with um, videos and so forth. Some random music here and there. So you could wander around and just kind of screw around with wherever you want to go. Um, I don't know if this is the latest version or not with the rockets in it, but if you look up, you can see there's um, videos playing for video advertising. Come over here and little random audio sounds and stuff here and there. Other version I was doing, I had like rockets that are flying through the air and stuff like that and taking off. With oh, wait, I hear one. There we go. Really cheesy looking rockets. Kind of rotate when they're going up. A little particle effect tail coming out the back of it and sound file and everything else. Yeah, really lame. But this is what I was doing when I got bored. Come over here. Well, we, we don't want to see what they're doing in there. Um, <laughs> you know. Just when you have nothing else better to do with your time in life. You make weird projects like this. Yeah, it fell off. Bastard. But, yeah. Go back to the main menu. And exit game. I had some other projects that I had set up that had multiple maps in it and showed a, a map selection method of doing um uh, like a checkbox um, map selection. So when you check in one box, it'll use that map, or when you check into a different box, it'll undo the rest of them, whatever might be checked, and you know, you, you can change it by checking it. It's it, an effective working system. Um, some vehicle testing stuff, too. Um, yeah, just all kind of crap. But the, uh, the, the Fortnite, you know, the, the Battle Royale, that one does work if you want to download it and share it with your friends it's actually a playable version of it so um, when you actually go in there you can actually play for as many players you want to put in there up to a hundred but I would you know it's peer-to-peer -peer as well so I would probably keep it around you know a dozen or so close friends 
four versus four, four, or four people in there. You can do single you know, player, not really single player, but solo. You can go in there as teams um, of up to five, I think. You're four or five. I can't remember. It's been a while. Um, survival, stream party. I got so many projects. So, yeah. Guys, keep in touch on the Discord thing. And like I said, if you want to get that demo, that image that I was looking for the other day was this freaking image showing the um, UV4 mannequin. And all I did was I used the glass texture and glass material on them. But there's other ways of doing it as well. But, you know, I used the, the glass material on them where you can change. And that was kind of a stealth thing. I did another one where it actually you could fade into it. But. The try before you buy for the farm pack is pretty cool. Added some motion to a few things. Um, this is the battle royale right here. Um, this is sci-fi project, which I think is the one where we're just going around the hoverboard. Um, try before you buy for Western Frontier. Uh, if you need a binocular mask or a scope, a screen mask for. PNGs or 10, 1080p in graphic size. If you see any in here that are broken, let me know. Um, I tried to do try the TB4, which is a try before you buy. You can actually sample the um, thing and walk around the environment, like the Battle Royale pack. This one right here is just walking around and looking at it. It's not actually you can take all your friends in here and go check it out, but you can't actually play it. I mean, you, there's no combat or anything in it. Um, this one right here was survival demo, which is using a survival demo kit or template. This one you can actually play. Um, you can shoot each other, make buildings, do construction, that kind of stuff. Uh, Polygon Nature is another try before you buy stuff. Um, some of the Google Drives are, most of them I took down because I was putting them on itch.io. Like this one right here was put on HIO. Um, Western Frontier should be on HIO still. Um, trying to get them all the full projects over, and I'm pretty sure the Battle Royale is on um, Google Drive. Click on that one. Let's see. Yeah, it works. Um, it might come up and say, whoops, there was a problem with the preview, because there isn't a preview for it. Just click on Download. And it'll download the, the RAR file. Just extract that. Whenever you extract um, that, what you're going to get is... That's survival demo there. You extract it, it'll create a folder called Fortnite. Kind of a running joke. I don't like Fortnite and Epic Games. I don't think they're going to put anything in the, the friggin' Unreal Engine 4 that's not going to make Fortnite run any better. So you're going to get all these files here right there, and all you do is just double click on the application of Fortnite and it'll load up. Like I said, you can just scroll through your characters and put a bunch of different characters in here. You can be like Gilly, Sight dude, Gilly Suit Dude. I'll tell you what, though, this ghillie suit, when you go in there and you're playing on the frickin' Battle Royale map, you hide in a damn bush or, or crouch down by a bush, and you're pretty much damn near invisible. That camo works a little too well. So you can go and pick your character. What if I want to be a good girl? In host game, um, max players. Four minimum players. Two play on Cinti Island. No friendly fire, no land. I click on host game. I'll see if anybody else joins here. I didn't really look into it enough to actually get rid of this, but anybody else joins in, they can. I can go ahead and load level, and it'll actually go into the uh, the game itself, and it won't start. It'll put you into a temporary zone until enough people actually join. I did have some weapons in here, but I took them out. Um, but you got two primaries and, a, and a, a pistol. I put blocking volumes in so you can't walk off into the water. Um, as long as there's nobody else here, you're just going to be stuck here. 
Um, and that's just small island I plopped down with a uh, building on it, so people can run around. You can put weapons. I could put weapons on here if I wanted to. I just haven't. So you could be shooting at each other, but you can't kill anybody because you're in the the limbo zone. When enough players join in, for the at least the minimum. So if only two people show up, then it'll wait and wait for like 30 seconds to a minute, and then if nobody else shows up, it'll do the countdown and start the actual game. And then it's just one versus one at that point. And then whatever, there's only one person left, it automatically um, ends the battle. It works. It works well. Not 100% fan of it, but you got inventory system where you can pick up items, you can pick up a backpack. Um, I took out short term the um, helmet and the chest armor. I don't remember if I fixed the other uh, backpack or not. Um, one, two, three, four, five for your weapons. Um, C for crouching. X to go into first person view. There's a few points where you actually have to crouch or sometimes have to go into the first person view to be able to pick up some of the weapons because of the camera issue. But like I said, I didn't do a whole lot of work on this. This was just slopping crap together. And quit game. But nobody seemed like they were interested, so I quit working on that. So whenever I get people who stop by Discord and ask about it or ask questions during, you know, like streams and stuff, then, yeah, I'll do more on a project, but if I don't get anybody that's asking about a project, I'm not going to work on it anymore. That, I'm old, I forget shit anyway. But, um, I mean, I got the project right there. And I can open the project and just continue right on. I'm not going to tonight because this is almost two hours on this stream and we were pretty much done before the hour was up. The rest has just been spitballing, talking about other stuff. I need to do more spitball videos where we can just sit here and chit-chat like this versus I probably should have cut this one off whenever I finished what I was doing. But yeah, this one usually takes a while to, to get loaded for some reason. Would you just go full screen so you can see the demonstration map? This like I said, this one's been updated. You got the circle. I've deactivated the circle on the two maps that, that I'm using, just simply because um, the maps were so small. But you can make bigger maps and use the circle if you want to, and even use the Cindy Studios circle, and the circle will shrink in and do just like it does in regular or Fortnite does. For the most part, you can set it up to be random different areas, so you don't know. Every time you play the game, it's a little bit different. You can also set it up to where the plane's flying over. You can parachute out of the plane if you want to. Um, I chose not to. The start zone is way over there, and when you get in here to start playing, then you can actually get in here and run around into the buildings. There's there grenade launchers, some grenades, regular hand grenades there, place weapons all over the different uh, buildings and so forth. Um, there's sodas that are for energy and healing, there's he you know health kits, I got all that kind of stuff in here. So this is actually a working playable demo and it actually works pretty good. Um, it's not great, but like I said, I, I stopped working on it because nobody else was um, was jumping on the bandwagon and saying, hey, that's really awesome, show me more. So, I'm going to quit doing it. It's like the Spitball series where I'm adding all kind of weird stuff in. The teleports, the pickups, the the mini golf. Yeah, I mean, nobody said, hey, I'm loving that. Um, I want more mini golf um, stuff. I was making a mini golf game. I'm making a mini golf template. Stopped doing the videos on it, and I was like, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to make an actual. Um... And where the hell's my map? I made a 
sample map. Where the hell is my map? Holy sh or a demo map right there. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I was doing a um, an actual template where I could put it on the marketplace where you can actually play golf. Use your mouse wheel to set the power. I was changing some things around and I kind of screwed it up a little bit, but. The other version is working well, but we're setting this up to um, to be a full template for setting up a mini golf game, and you've got working cup and transitions between cups and things of that nature. Um, what was the other one that I was doing with that? Um, yeah, that one. Different versions of frickin' Unreal Engine 4. I gotta quit having multiple versions installed. The car, the car racing one, where I did a frickin' um, spline actor template for creating the track and being able to place tracks all the way around, and City Studios, you know, vehicles retargeted over so you can drive City Studios cars around the track and race against each other. Um, yeah, I mean. Just doing all that and getting all that set up and that's going to stay on hold until I get more interest in it. So, if you open up this, this version of the golf game seemed to be working a little bit better. I don't know why. The FPS series. Um, Cowboy one, where it's actually using um, AI um, enemies template where you actually have AI that confront each other and go into combat. You can have some that are actually going to go against you if you want them to. Um, yeah, I mean, whatever. The same thing with uh, the World War II version. Test map. I was going to be doing the City Studios playing on Pirates and with this one. So you use the mouse. I left it where you can actually see the power levels. So you aim with your mouse. Okay, tap it in. Yep, sinks it in the cup. As soon as it does that, it resets your power level and sends you to the T for the next um, round. If it goes out, it actually has an auto reset to where it'll actually um, um, reset your ball back to your last position when the ball stopped. So if I'm right here, and my ball stops. I have to wait for it to stop to be able to hit again. But if I full power, pow! Oh shit, it went out of the course. When it resets, it resets to the last known location that I was in before I went off course. Uses full gravity system. The mouse wheel uh, is what you use for... I, I used the mouse wheel because for old farts like me, it seemed like a, an easier thing to do than trying to move the mouse back and forward, and you know, and boop, when it goes in the cup, you get a little, you know, a little sound file to go with it, and it resets and goes to the next um, next hole. And this should be 650, about right there. Mm, yes. <laughs> But you see, and it transitions holes, and it just works, you know? Oh, shit, no, 650. Damn it, I missed. So, little tap, sets, and goes. And I thought it was cool to have the reset system as well. Um... It said, so you're on the T, I'm just go ahead and cue it up to full speed. And if it goes out of bounds, then you automatically reset and to your last known position. It sucks when you underpower it right before a hill. <laughs> it takes a little bit longer to stop than I really want it to. I haven't come up with a great method of stopping the ball, 
but it will stop. It just takes a little while. Oh, you asshole. Get up that damn hill. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, I was setting up this uh, to be an actual gameplay, uh, game building template, so that you can actually, you get the base mechanics. I was going to put it on the marketplace and um, with the base mechanics set. Now, just because I'm doing it without a player, I think it's better if you don't actually have the player. Um, I have included a couple of animations um, in this template that apparently aren't in there. Um, no, they're still in here. They're Mixamo animations, but you get... Um, Yeah, that's kind of a long drive. That's a chip drive, putt. So you actually get um, the animation. I've already had it retargeted and working. But, you know, you get a putt animation. So you can actually have a player character standing there. So when you actually do your putt, the character actually swings and, and it hits the ball and that kind of stuff. But I kind of like it this way with no no player. But the reason why I kept the animations in there is if you want to set up your menu to get in a hole, damn it. Thank you. Um, to actually have like a player standing there putting a ball or, or something like that. You have some, some animations of golf animations there. Um, so it's not just a dead theme, you know? I'm cheating. There is a way of cheating in this one. Um, the other one, I, I took that, that ability out, where you could not hit the ball until it reached a certain velocity, below a certain velocity. Um, but this one, you can actually, so I haven't done it yet, you can actually keep tapping it while it's moving. And I disabled the stroke counter. Um, I did have the stroke counter working as well, and was setting up to where you actually had a billboard that could be on the wall and show the player score, you know, kind of stuff. But I was just setting up a good golf template, so um, you could actually buy it from the marketplace, download it, and, and create your own golf game based off of, you know, a simple-to-use template. A miniature version of Town. Um, this one was a uh, driving game that I'm starting around for Jeep. You know, driving a Jeep around. Lots of multiplayer stuff in here. Theater. This one I covered in um, game concept ideas. And I'll do another video because i got another one that I want, wanted to talk to people about. See if they wanted a, you know free game ideas. This one's called the 502. And it's the 502nd Infantry, or Parachute Regiment from D-Day in Normandy. And it's the story about them, essentially. It plays out where you're um, the 502nd Parachute Regiment was part of the 101st Airborne and during Normandy on D-Day uh, there were some issues with the dum-dums flying the planes to deploy the, the Parachute uh, Regiment to get them into Normandy and um, a small group of aircraft the pilots turn on the light for their um, their troops to jump to parachute and the dumb fucks were still over the English Channel and they parachuted into the English Channel and died every one of them died and it's such bullshit so what I was starting to work with on this particular project was each of the drop zones and this is um, a representative of drop zone alpha it's kind of like my own version. It's not a hundred, not going to be a hundred percent, but it's it's all Cinti Studios assets. A fire and fireplace over there. You get your eighty eights. The drop zone alpha. The whole point behind behind drop zone alpha was your parachute regiment. You were dropped into drop zone alpha, and um, you encountered a few problems on landing. I poor some bitch there, and that poor some bitch right there. Um, but the objective was, and I haven't finished populating the rest of the map, uh, but the roads are in somewhat the same as what the map orientation is. Uh, 
another parachute guy over here landed on a freaking tree stump and ripped his guts out. So I was just, it, it, as I, I was doing, I was adding more stuff in. And the whole basic concept was the um, drop zone alpha, troops dropped in, and they maneuvered through the hedgerows and so forth to take out an artillery battery. And so therefore I've set up a small artillery area here. There'll be hedgerows set up and more trees and stuff like that. But we're setting it up to where each map was dropped on Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and so forth. So it would actually be, and this was going to have the um, AI system in it. And there will be an active war going on in this battle space. Or you could play with friends. Um and you could assault across. You're fighting against AI that um, are going to be shooting back and doing well, and getting killed, respawning, things of that nature. But you know, you can, as you get close to the houses, there might be snipers. Um, you get close enough to the um, artillery positions, and they open up fire on you and start shooting at you. Um, feel like that, you know. I don't have sprint set up yet. But that was one of the games that, that I was giving away the idea for because I would love to play an actual game built this way. It doesn't have to use the Cindy Studios characters, but it does need to be an accurate enough representation of the real D-Day and not just the invasion on the frickin' beach. Everybody knows about, oh, D-Day, they, they landed on the beach. and who? And I'm not saying who cares necessarily, but we all know about that shit. But how many people actually have spent time reading and, and researching about what actually happened the rest of the D-Day invasion? The 502nd Parachute Regiment. Look at them. I mean, it doesn't hurt that I was um, in the Berlin Brigade. We were 4th, 5th, and 6th Battalion, 502nd Infantry Division. Still associated as part of the 502nd Parachute Regiment before it got renamed into the Infantry Division. The 502nd Infantry Division, still associated with 101st Airborne. So, yeah, it doesn't hurt that I was in uh, uh, 6th Battalion, 502nd Infantry Division, Headquarters, and Charlie Company. So I did hoof it as a, a grunt. So and I got my, my legs. So yeah, this is this is cool. That's that's that. I'm getting out of here. Um, the other one that I'm kind of looking towards right now, trying to get all the other particulars about, was um, a game very similar to Subnautica, where you're in like modular chambers and so forth. But it's actually um, you're on the moon as part of an, a quote-unquote scientific slash um, commercial exploration and since, technically speaking, there is going to be another trip to the moon in about five years. Um, essentially, that the new storyline is that you are part of that um, story where you're now one of the first people to be actually on the moon. Oh, shit. I still haven't fixed the, the, the placement bug. But, yeah, with that, you're actually going around. You'll be able to to make excursions out in spacesuits and also on the the moon buggies and moon rovers and things like that so that you're, um, you're able to uh, go out and, quote-unquote, you're looking for the fact that supposedly there's water on the moon. So you're out searching for the sources of water, so that you could set up facilities for um, converting, because water is H2O, you're recycling the water and ripping the hydrogen out to use as fuel and the oxygen out to use to breathe with. So it's important that you find sources of water and then you establish um, facilities there for colonizing the areas near the, the large water sources so that now you can actually make excursions out and search for mineral deposits like um, uh, uranium or what have you that is then commercially sold to pay for expanding your colony and shit like that. So, yeah, I'll explain more of that later on. But 
Guys, take care. Hit me up on Discord. Let me know what you want to see. And uh, if you have questions about other stuff, whatever. Um, but just let me know. And we will see you guys around. I'm going to take a break. Love you guys. See you.